Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and today we're over on my progressive reloading bench. And uh, later on, I'm going to be loading up some 45 Colt black powder ammunition. But before I do that, I wanted to address an issue that I noticed off of last week's video. And in last week's video, you may recall that uh, one of the things I showed you how to do was to find out how much powder black powder should go uh, in your cartridge case, right? And we had marked a dowel, filled it with powder, get that lined up, and we know when we do it up the line, that's how much powder we need. And then we threw it on a scale, which I'm going to do right here, and that was 27.7 grains, or 28 grains. So here we are, powder's in the pan, and 27.7 grains of powder. So I said 28 grains. And uh, I got several comments asking me, how many grains of volume by volume is that? Uh, because black powder is loaded by volume. And that is true up to a point, but I think, I think most people, I shouldn't say most people, a lot of people don't really understand what that means. And a lot of people seem to think that there is a measure of weight called grains, and that there's also a measure of volume, right? Like using one of these measures, that's also grains. Right? Kind of like ounces can be weight or ounces can be volume of liquid. Uh, but that's not true for grains. Grain is strictly a measure of weight. There are 7,000 grains in a pound, and that's it. Um, so what people get confused by is all gunpowder, not just black powder, but all gunpowder is measured by weight. That's why we have scales. But it's dispensed by volume. And that's true whether it's black powder or smokeless powder. It really doesn't matter. And uh, I'm going to try to show you. I don't know if this will come across very well. On. All right. This is an RCBS Uniflow powder measure, and it's used for smokeless powder. All right. So you'd put powder in the hopper up here. Not going to do that. And right in here, inside this drum, there's a charging cylinder. And the size of that cylinder is adjustable by these nuts. You can make it bigger or smaller. And to throw a charge of powder, right, the charging drum fills up from the hopper. And then you rotate it, and it dumps out of here into a cartridge case. Right, boom. And that's how smokeless powder measures typically work. Well... What you'd do then is you would throw this charge of, say, unique or, you know, whatever, blue dot, on a scale. And you'll adjust this until you are throwing the correct weight of powder charge for the cartridge that you're loading. So if I was loading 45 Colt with unique, right, I would adjust this until I was throwing 7.8 grains of unique when I dump it on the scale. So I'm measuring it by weight. That's how I'm determining I've got the right charge. But I'm dispensing it by volume, the volume inside that cylinder. Okay? So that's true for smokeless powder. It's true for black powder. It's the same thing. So let's, let's, say, let's say I'm using a powder measure like this one. Right? We all know these powder measures... Let me get where you can see it. All right, so we're all familiar with these powder measures. Got a little set screw. It's got a slider, and it's marked in 10 grain increments. All right, so if I wanted 30 grains, I would set it right here, and that gives me 30 grains. Well, that is exactly the same thing, right? The space inside here that I'm going to fill with powder is the volume that weighs out to 30 grains of powder. Okay, and, and I'll show you. 
Okay, so I've got the powder measure, right, and it's marked, it's filled up to 30 grains, and I'm going to pour it on the scale, and we've got 29.4 grains, okay? Now, these measures necessarily are not going to be precise, and the reason for that is because they don't know when they make these if you're going to be using 3F, 2F, 1F, if it's going to be GOEX, Swiss, uh, Vano, Elephant. So they're approximate. Most of them are gauged, I have found, for 2FG GOEX. Right? So they're, they're pretty much right on for that. Now this is 2FG Schutzen, 29.5, and it's set for 30. Right? That's how it works. So your powder charge is measured, it's determined, basically, by weight, right? So we're going to be using a 29.5 or 30 grain powder charge. But it's dispensed, generally, by volume. Uh, because, of course, they're expecting you to be loading a muzzle loader, not cartridges. Right, but that is true of all powders, not just black powder. And, and I hope that kind of clears up the misconception about grains of volume versus grains of, of weight. It's all the same. There are only grains of weight. Uh, in fact, for volume, we use cubic centimeters, right? So this is a 1.9 cubic centimeter scoop. If I was... If I was to fill this up, It is going to deliver just under 30 grains of powder and 28.7, right? So, uh, so that's the way we measure volume, cubic centimeters, not grains. And then we measure weight by grains. So it all comes out the same. So basically, when you are trying to develop a load or to load cartridges or load a gun, you develop your load, basically you're going for a weight that determines your powder. And if you were doing precision long range shooting, where it really mattered, and you're a good enough shot that small differences matter to you, right? Your gun is that accurate and you are that accurate a shooter. Uh, those guys who are really good at that, they weigh every charge because that's gonna give them the most consistent results. Uh, because by volume, it can vary a little bit, depending on how tightly it gets packed in one of these things. But weight is always weight. So if you weigh out a 30 grain charge every time, it's always going to be 30 grains. Okay, so I hope that clears things up a little bit. Uh, feel free to write me and tell me that you totally disagree with me. If you want, that's fine, or you didn't understand it. I'm not trying to obfuscate it. Uh, I'm hopefully... Uh, just trying to clear up that misconception. Okay, that brings us to the last area I want to discuss in terms of measurement, and that is black powder substitutes, like 777. Uh, now, there's nothing magic about these. They will behave exactly the same way as any other powder, and we treat them like black powder. So, once again, if you want to find, you know, the load for your case, you do the same stick method, right? That's the, uh, that stick is even with the crimp groove on the bullet. So we're just going to fill this up until that stick is at the right level. All right, so I've filled the shell casing with powder. I put in 1.9 cc's with this Lee scoop. And now if I put my dowel in, I'm going to be right on the line, right? So we know that that's the load. And triple seven, by the way, does not like compression. Uh, if you compress it much at all, you'll start to get kind of erratic velocities. The, the pressure changes quite a bit. But I'm gonna throw this in the scale. Okay, now we know that when I did the same amount of black powder in this 45 Colt case, I had about 28, 29 grains of powder. With 777, I've got 14.8. Okay, so we can round that to 15. So the load for this is going to be 15 grains 
of triple seven by weight. And that would be absolutely correct. Now, the funny thing is, or not the funny thing, but the thing you have to know about substitutes is they develop them to be a volume for volume equivalent to black powder. Right? So, if you're determining your case and you weigh it and you get 14.8, 15 grains, that's your load. Uh, and now you're going to want to know how to throw that load consistently. Now, in this case, we know it's 1.9 cc's, right? So that's okay. But let's say you didn't have a Lee Dipper set, and you didn't already know that. So you're working with one of these, right? Well, this measure is calibrated for actual black powder. So like, <clears throat> like I showed you before, when I set this on 30, fill it up with black powder and throw it on the scale, it measures very close to 30 grains. But set for 30 on here, it's going to be about 15 grains of triple seven. And 15 grains of triple seven takes up the same volume, roughly, as about 25 grains, 28 grains of regular black powder, right? So we would want, I pour this in here, I've got some space. I'm going to push my plunger up. There. Okay, so I've raised the plunger up so that that 777 load just fills the case. I'm going to put it back on the scale. All right, it's still 14.8. And now we're running just about 20 grains. That's, that's the equivalent on this with no compression. Now, we did 30 with regular black powder because I'm compressing it about a tenth of an inch. And with 777, I don't want to compress it. 777 is a little more powerful anyway. So my 777 load for that cartridge is going to be 20 grains volume equivalent, right? Which is 1.9 cc's or 20 grain setting on one of these black powder measures. And, and the reason I did that is because they didn't expect you to be loading cartridges and using a scale. They expected you to be loading rifles with a flask or a, a fixed powder measure, and that you'd already been using black powder, and now you wanted to replace your black powder with this stuff. Right? So they wanted you to be able to replace it using the same measure that you had used before, which, which makes absolute sense. Okay, so... This is a difference. If, if you want to, if you want to determine it by weight, uh, it works just like any other powder because it is just like any other powder. But if you already know the black powder load that you want to shoot, and you already have a volume measure for that, you know whether it's one of these or a piece of deer antler that's carved out or whatever, well, you can use that same volume measure you're using for black powder. Just fill it up and dump it in because it's a volume for volume equivalent. Though, like I say. Triple seven does not really like to be compressed. So that's something you should take into account uh, because you probably are compressing Go X in your loads if you're using Go X right now. Okay, so that covers substitutes and that really covers the difference uh, between measuring and dispensing powder. And just to recap, all powders, whether it's black powder, smokeless powder, doesn't matter if it's Vano powder or Goex powder or Swiss powder or Unique or Bullseye or Blue Dot or IMR, you name it, HP38, doesn't matter. They are all measured by weight. When you look in a reloading manual, it's going to tell you the weight of the charge of powder. And you need a scale to get that right. But all powders, virtually all powders, except for real precision applications, are actually dispensed by volume. And that doesn't matter if it's smokeless powder or black powder. That's, that's how we do it. So once you've got your weight, you have to determine what volume, you know, whether it's one of these or it's a powder measure mounted on a press uh, or a powder measure mounted on your bench or a piece of antler. Uh, it's hollowed out to hold a charge. It doesn't matter. You want to know what volume 
holds that weight of charge. And that'll do it consistently, and uh, that's what you can use to load. So, I hope that makes sense. I didn't add any voodoo or extra witchcraft to this that wasn't necessary. So, if you like it, give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you next week.